Well, as WikiLeaks continues to release hacked emails showing Clinton campaign corruption, another political watchdog group is uncovering more misconduct. Reports by Project Veritas uh, were brought to our attention by One America viewers. And right now, we want to let you know that we are listening. Take a look. of the governor and not go to jail. Uh, 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 and yeah, 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 and other people can make things happen that you don't need to know about. We talk about lots of things that we don't talk about. You know what? We've been busting people in the deep for 50 years, and we're not going to stop now. This is part two of our undercover investigation into the dark, backroom dealings of the Hillary Clinton campaign. Part one blew up on social media, with many Americans wondering why the mainstream media wasn't covering the story. In fact, Project Veritas Action had television exclusives lined up around the country. Those television stations spiked the story at the last minute. Our sources tell us the reason they did so was fear of retaliation and retribution from a future Hillary Clinton administration. Truth is dangerous, especially when it challenges those in power. In this video, Democratic operatives tell us how to successfully commit voter fraud on a massive scale. Left for union guys? They'll do whatever. Oh yeah. You want? Yeah. They're rock and roll. So I'm basically deputy rapid response director for the DNC for all things Trump on the ground. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We have mentally ill people. Mm. We pay. <laughs> Make no mistake. This guy named Caesar Vargas. Is his name. I got a priest to cry on camera once. You know, Brad, Bob, and Lux, and myself are all part of the old school method where it doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We, we need to win this. Um, so Bob is really good friends with him mm -hmm. and talked to him this afternoon. And they are all in. If we can get 25 grand, they're all in. Our investigators wanted to find out what it would take to get the highest favorable turnout. Democratic Politico Scott Fovel was our target, and he was more than willing to lead us through the process of how to rig an election. We did spam when we were in charge, too. So what did we do? We did the exact same thing. Only we, we manipulated the vote with money and action, not with laws. It's a very easy thing for Republicans to say, well, they're busting people in. Well, you know what? We've been busting people in to deal with for 50 years, and we're not going to stop now. We're just going to find a different way to do it. So, I mean, I grew up with that idea. You know, they they used to bust people out to Iowa. If we needed people out there, we used to bust people out to Iowa. When we met Scott Fovel, he worked for People for the American Way, an organization funded in large part by George Soros. He now works for Americans United for Change. It's a nonprofit that claims to, quote, move America in a new, better direction, unquote. With guys like Fovel working for them, we wonder what direction that might be. When I do this, I, I think you're an investigator first. Good, yeah, work backwards, yes. Yeah, that's I used, great. I used to do the investigation. Yeah, the different method. I think backwards from how they would prosecute if they yeah. could. And then try to build out the method to avoid that. The plan that was discussed was how to bring people from one state into another state to vote illegally. They could invalidate... Well, okay, let's just say, in theory, if, an, if a major investigation came up of major vote fraud that way, how would they prove it and who would they charge? Are they going to charge each individual? Oh, sorry. Are they going to charge each individual with See, that's or what, they, they they're going to go after the facilitator for conspiracy, which they can prove. And one thing, 
if all these people drive up in their personal cars, there's a bus involved. Uh, that changes the dynamic. So, so it's the legality. Uh, well, yeah. Because you can prove conspiracy if there's a bus. Yeah. If there are cars, it's much harder to prove. And there's enough money. If there's enough money, then you have people drive their POV. Absolutely. Or you have them drive runs. Yeah, with with Mil with Wisconsin license plates. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you can't have them with Wisconsin license plates because rentals here, most of them don't have Wisconsin license plates. Oh. But there's this thing called used car auction. Ah. Ah. Used car auction. The titles belong to some unknown company. Their company car. And you know, these are multiple employers. These are not all one so employer. Use shell. Yeah. You use shell companies. Yeah. Cars come from one company, the same cars come from another. There's no bus involved, so you can't prove that it's on mass. There you go. So it doesn't tip people off. There you go. That's what I'm saying. See, okay, yeah. So now I'm starting to see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I do this, I, I think you're an investigator first. Good. Yeah. Work backwards. Yes. Yeah, that's I used, great. I used to do the investigation. Yeah. Different method. I think backwards from how they would prosecute if they yeah. could. And then try to build out the method to avoid that. So, okay, so you're saying shell company, you're saying um, the car... It's a car rental has a Wisconsin license and is owned by a third entity. Then it's much harder to prove that these people drove in from out of state. There's no bus involved, so you can't prove conspiracy. And they would have to be looking for them in the first place. Oh, a bus is something that you're not yeah that you're not looking for. Or exactly, that you are looking for yeah a car in. Our journalist helped brainstorm with Fovel on how to come up with addresses for their phony voters. Now, if we just have the canvassers logging the homes, they don't even have to—they don't even have to know why they're doing. Put a mark on it and say this address. You know, we we have moved, but moves could mean someone else moved in. Take that data and you flip it out and you give it to people and you have people go vote it. That's brilliant. I love it. So yeah, and and you know, it's sort of depends upon how you know how much the canvassers don't have to know why they're they just need to be no. told to do yeah in fact you don't want them to know. right the question is whether when you get caught by a reporter does that matter because does it turn into an investigation or not in this case in this state the answer is no because they don't have any power to do anything right so so this is sort of maybe maybe not stuff for the general, but stuff to maybe hold no, off until until. No, I think you could do it for the general. Yeah, it right here. Okay. So what you do is you implement the plan on a much bigger scale. Uh -huh. you implement a massive change in state legislatures and in Congress. Uh -huh. So you aim higher for your goals. And then you implement it across every Republican health state. So starting on the grassroots, um, but that's honestly the ripest environment to do it in. Two within within striking distance. Michigan, Indiana, the least restrictive donation caps and, and campaign finance laws and investigation and, and investigative arms and any of that. Like they have weakened it so bad in these three states. You could f your mother in front of the governor and not go to jail. If you had enough money to go like this. Fovel then told our journalist that he knew the guy that makes stuff like this happen. So Bob Kramer uh -huh. comes up with a lot of these ideas. Uh -huh. I work with Bob Kramer one to one all the time. I'm the white hat. Democracy partners is kind of dark hat. Um, I will probably end up being a partner there at some point uh -huh. because our philosophy on things is the same.